Yeah, g'day, Push Camping Tools here. Well, what I want to talk to you today about is uh, warranties, product warranties. So I'm going to just be giving you some anecdotal stories here on those. So it's really about warranties, good and bad experiences with the following companies. None of these are in any sort of order, and they're all about uh, some kind of outdoor equipment that I personally use either on the channel or outside the channel or I just haven't brought yet to the channel. So please know before anyone accuses me of this, that and the other and starts swearing at me, etc. You know, these are, as I said, they're all anecdotal stories. Uh, these are not based upon multiple testing of the same products. Okay, so this is not about a quality control. Okay, so I got a uh, replacement knife from Kisler Supreme. No questions asked. Did not even have to return the defective product. Uh, it was simply a very, very, very slight movement in, in a shifting grip, like we're talking about half a millimeter, and it was just bugging me, I don't know why, but anyway, I contacted the manufacturer, the company uh, directly replaced the product, uh, you know, there was, so I interacted with the company, and, and there was no questions asked. Uh, I have a rucksack, it's very, very old, it's the model Aztec, uh, it was uh, from a manufacturer called MacPack, I believe they're still operating. Uh, at the time of the warranty claim it was 10 years old, waist belt had started to tear on the waist belt a little bit, and so I contacted directly the manufacturer, not the retailer where I bought uh, the product from. Uh, bear in mind, it's been to uh, over 5,000 meters, it's, it's been all over Australia, flogged to death, in and out of airports all around the world, um, and I'm still using it today. Anyway, they took this thing back uh, with no questions asked, they paid for the shipping, the sending and the return shipping, and they did an excellent repair of the waist strap. I was totally surprised because I said, look guys, it's like 10 years old. You know, I, I don't mind you repairing it, I'll, I'll pay for the repairs. They said, no problems, we will do that free of charge. I kid a pair of Alpina uh, walking boots. Uh, I returned them due to a uh, leaking in a uh, waterproof membrane. This happened on the very first day, it was raining, we went to the shop and we walked home in the rain. He didn't even put his foot in a puddle and the thing started leaking. We made a warranty claim. A full refund was given after a short one week uh, warranty claim uh, via the shop to Alpina. Uh, a second pair of Alpina boots was purchased, a higher grade model. So far zero problems with that. So there was, there was no problem there. The store was great for filling out the warranty claim and Alpina obviously uh, you know, uh, validated that claim on the warranty. Right, recently in the last couple of months, uh, a return due to the presence of extremely small cracks being formed in the reinforcing uh, material around the lacing system in both boots from Fitwell. The model was the Fitwell Big Wall Trek. And I've been wearing them in the field from snow to mud for about three weeks when I noticed this. A warranty claim was uh, made through the physical store of purchase to the manufacturer. After about three weeks, I have to say it sounds a long time, but during, there was a holiday break between there, so it wasn't really three working weeks. Um, a full refund was given, no questions asked, um, after the warranty claim was confirmed by the manufacturer. And the store was really good about it too. They said, you know, clearly th this is a warranty issue. They weren't trying to argue out of that. Now something, not so much a warranty claim, but an end user issue with um, the, the purchase of a product which did not come with instructions with the laser bore site. I recently made a couple of videos on this. I contacted the manufacturer directly called Vector Optics. They replied within two working days uh, with a solution to my query, and that was they supplied uh, some verbal instructions plus the PDF of the manual, which was not in there, and also said, you know, if I've got any further problems, do not hesitate to contact me. So I thought that was really good. Two working days is fine. Uh, yeah. Now, I have one issue with a Panasonic camera, one that I use in the field uh, a lot. I'm also working as a professional cameraman, so I use professional cameras all the time. Uh, I had a bad experience with Panasonic many, many years ago, sort of thing, and it's really put me off their products. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Panasonic uh, did not resolve to my satisfaction the issues with this particular camera, and so, you know, I'm not inclined to purchase any more Panasonic products. I don't care how professional they are or how much they cost, because it was just a pain to even talk to somebody a physical person without getting a, a roneoed off run around robotic reply from everyone I spoke to or at least had an email from. They were just basically all the same emails. 
I don't know whether this is a consequence of Panasonic being such a ginormous company globally, uh, and they, they, their version of customer service is rubbish. Okay, I got zero customer satisfaction from MSR when a while back ago I purchased a tent which I believe was uh, incorrectly uh, label branded with, you know, their company official branding. I sent several emails, in fact it was about five emails, no replies whatsoever. That kind of peeved me off. I know MSR has changed a lot since I first encountered them during my student days at university. Uh, when you know I, a bunch of students, you know, we were early supporters of this company when it, literally it was a one-man show. You know, and I purchased uh, my first multi-fuel stove, an MSR XGK, which I have to this day. It's a brilliant stove. I know there are other iterations of the XGK uh, of such, but the original is still fantastic. You can still buy kits to to uh, keep these things on the road, so to speak, or on the mountain, and it served me faithfully, completely. Uh, however, now MSR is owned by uh, a much bigger company which owns many, many uh, things. I think it's the Thermarest company which uh, owns all of these, you know, MSR, Seal, uh, uh, Line and all these other products like that which may be very familiar to you. And I found it almost impossible to speak, well basically impossible to speak with anybody, email or not, for customer service. So basically, uh, I gave up and finally responded with a video about the product on the channel. Uh, interestingly, this only created more havoc for me as it seemed I'd personally offended many people who own this particular tent. And somehow, despite me saying this was an N number of one, this was just my particular tent, my model, I was getting accused of all sorts of things. And, and, and I'm such a bad person, I'm an idiot. I got called all sorts of things from a fool to an idiot to a bad person to people even swearing at me, although I deleted those because I don't really tolerate swearing on the channel. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, you know, and, and this all really stemmed from people not reading the video description properly or even listening to the video and just accusing me of what they had in, fixed in their mind. So I was a, you know, well, you know, shows a lack of literacy uh, out there amongst, you know, those particular individuals. Now let's talk about mountain biking because I'm a uh, keen and avid mountain biker, have been for many years. Uh, I had a, uh, a bushing fail on me on a downhill trek mountain bike whilst I was living and working in Japan. Uh, I bought the bike in Australia but I did not try to uh, go for a warranty claim through the retailer in Australia. I thought it would be too difficult so I contacted Trek directly in Japan. Well that just went as smooth as... Um, uh, you know, I, I, I met with an English-speaking representative of the, of the company because my Japanese was lousy. And uh, anyway, they sorted me out completely. They had that part delivered, I think was delivered within less than three days to my place of work at a university I was working at as a researcher. And uh, yeah, basically, and then I spent, you know, a couple of hours one afternoon reinstalling it and I was back on the mountains with it. So that was great. That was excellent service from Tr Trek Japan, I've got to say. Right now, often I think, you know, people are doing many tests of if we're going to be talking about knives on the internet and, and some people destroy these things on purpose uh, to get the, the views, the clickbait or whatever they like making fail videos. Personally, I've never had time for the fail video because I just don't want a place full of junked knives or junked products which I know are going to fail from the start. However, I have had um, uh, one knife from Goodman was supplied for a test. It never got up on the channel. I had big issues with it, and um, since that time, I, I um, basically washed my hands of doing any videos of their products. I'm not saying that any of their products are rubbish by no means. All I'm saying is that I got a rubbish response from them that wasn't plausible, and I didn't like that. I, I think there was, and, and also they blamed some anonymous worker in the factory for this. This is just really ridiculous. I'm not interested in that from the customer perspective. I'm not interested in, you know, apportioning blame to someone. I'm only interested in how the customer service is going to be um, expedited. Right, this next uh, example is not really a customer service issue as such, but, you know, I use DMM products for both caving and climbing. I've got more of their products essentially for, for climbing you know, crabs, pulleys, all sorts of things. And a while ago, I bought one of their pulleys, a good one too, not a, not a cheapo one. Not that it should make any difference because they're made to a safety standard. And I discovered that there was some very fine hairline cracks 
in a part of the device. So I contacted them with the serial number. I wrote an email with the serial number because they're all batch numbers and whatever. And in fact, I wrote two emails. I got no response from them. I thought that was kind of irresponsible not to acknowledge this. I also sent detailed macro photographs too. And uh, I, I wasn't really interested in even getting my money back on the thing. I just wanted to know what they were going to do about this, were they going to investigate this or not, because it's a serious thing. So that really put me off buying, um, thinking about buying DMM products. Again, they make great stuff, and as I said, I've got lots of their stuff, and I'm not about to chuck it out. But I think, you know, when it comes to um, potential safety issues with climbing uh, equipment manufacturers, you know, it's really important to get good customer service or, and, and at least get a response back from them if you think you've got an issue. Okay, so that's enough. These are just anecdotal stories, as I said, you know, but I have based my future purchases uh, upon them and what I think about these company products. For the negative stories, I'm in no way suggesting that you don't go out and buy their products. Just for the positive stories here, I'm in no way suggesting that you should also purchase you know, those particular company products. Every situation is going to be uh, different. So my advice is the following. Be honest with a warranty claim. If you've abused or used the item not in accordance with the manufacturer's uh, specifications and or instructions, then don't whinge about not getting any customer service. Be honest with the retailer too, whether that's a physical retailer or an internet shop that you've gone through, so as not to put them in an embarrassing situation. And make sure you've read the instructions that come or, or came with the product that you've bought, if there are in fact any instructions, uh, before jumping to save embarrassment. Or even better still, if you're a reviewer like me out on YouTube, you know, make sure that you know how to use the product before slagging it and, and suggesting to all that it, it, it doesn't work. You know, the case in point was recently I reviewed a, a small wood burning stove from uh, Kechea. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it correctly or not. But um, yeah, it's been slated on many channels, but the thing works perfectly fine if you know how to use it. Now, if you can't get any uh, satisfaction via the store, whether that's a physical store or internet store for a warranty claim, then go to the manufacturer, try the manufacturer. If you don't get any satisfaction from the manufacturer, then I would advise you uh, the right way about going about doing it is to seek out further consumer advice in your particular country. The wrong way is to get up and start slagging, you know, I don't like, you know, uh, Mercedes-Benz cars because blah, 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 because of this, that, now. That doesn't solve anything. It just gets people's backs up. Lastly, I think customer service, of course, is paramount. Uh, and uh, from the customer service perspective, I once worked for a large uh, U.S. corporation. They had branches globally. And uh, the very first week of starting work with this company, uh, they drilled all the newbies on what they expected from us from customer service. So we didn't have any disgruntled customers on the phone or trying to bang down the door with axes, etc. I think that's really important. And on this latter note, when you're dealing with customer service, try and get the person's name that you're dealing with, at least their first name, even if they're not permitted to give out their surname, because it makes them feel like they're not just a number, because you don't like being treated like a number, neither do they all the time. And probably customer service, sometimes they get berated with you know, people complaining all the time, and, and it just makes things, you know, if people are polite and that, it makes things run a whole lot smoother. All right, thanks for watching Bush Camping Tools here.